Google Web Stories is a brand new thing, but I'm wondering if it's even worth your time. Sure, it looks really sexy and it's coming to Google search results and they've just released a plugin for WordPress that allows you to make these stories, but let's see if it's even worth your time. Now, the current reality is these web stories are not being shown yet on a wide scale basis in the Google search results. And you've seen these types of web stories before. They were originally in Instagram and then they're in Facebook and they're on YouTube as well. Here's what it will look like in the Google search results. Now, the only search term I could put in where I would find it is right here, which is CNN news stories, but these will most likely for various searches just appear versus me directly searching for them right here. So you can see I entered this in and this will only work on a mobile device, by the way, it will not show in the normal search engine results on a desktop. So here I am. And so it's showing me their website. It's showing me some latest news stories. But then when I scroll down, we have this new section right here called visual stories. Let's go through one of these visual stories together. I'll go ahead and click on one right here. And you can see it's a very immersive experience and you have basically an image or maybe a short video and some text overlaid on it and you're allowed to have one link per slide however if you're into affiliate marketing they do not recommend using more than one affiliate link for this entire story so as i click on it it goes to the next slide and you can see ever so faintly here at the top if it's going automatically you'll see the time continue to be taken up before it goes to the next slide so you basically click through it just like this and you're getting an image and you're getting a bit of text. Now, Google recommends for these web stories that they be a minimum of four to five slides up to about 30 slides or so. Yes, they've released guidelines for these stories. So now I'm gonna show you how to create one of these web stories on your WordPress website. And then I'm gonna pour a bit of reality on top of should you even spend your time doing this because there's a lot of buzz going around. In fact, I had multiple people ask me about this, which prompted me to make this video because when I originally saw that this was coming out, it was kind of like a yawn fest for me. It was not that big of a deal. But let's take a look at creating one and help you to draw your own conclusion on it. Now, before I show you how to get the plugin and put it on your website, I know someone's going to ask how I did that mobile view. Well, if you use Google Chrome, you can go into the developer tools, as you can see I've done here, and then click this little icon. And then there is an option right here to emulate a mobile device. And so I've emulated the iPhone X and the dimensions. And then I just crop this for my video and you can see that's how you can show what something would truly look like on a mobile device. And the only cost to you is using Google Chrome, which you probably already use. Now I'm gonna put a link to this in the video description for you because right now you have to get the official plugin from Google because it's in beta. My guess is later this summer, it will be final and it will put be put in the WordPress plugin directory. So you're gonna need to come to this link and you're gonna need to click right here where it says download the beta. But I would also recommend that you go through this page just to get an idea of what it's going to be like creating these stories. There's also templates available that they're providing, which is nice for these stories. And it talks about right here about the beta and it talks about what additional features are coming that are not currently inside of the plugin. As you see down here, the final version will include animation and page attachment support. Now, once you've downloaded the plugin, I'm not going to walk you through uploading a plugin. I've done that in so many videos. Once you activate it, you're going to have a new menu item right here that says stories. I'll go ahead and click on that. Now, I've already gone ahead and created a story based off of a template. It's right here. But let's go ahead and click on explore templates so you can see the variety of templates that are available. And if you've ever used a graphic design tool that has templates, you know that the templates look really sexy, really good. But then when you go in to try to actually do something personalized with the template, it's quite difficult. So when I hover over a template, I have the option to view it or I can click on 
use template. So I'll go ahead and click on use template for this one right here. And it takes me into this actually kind of neat editor builder for making these web stories. So we have these three options here at the top, which is image, text, and a shape. If I click on text, it just kind of adds it. So let's see, I can add a heading and we have it there. It's not styled or anything. You would have styling options here on the right. And so it's not pulling images from any online image sources. It's literally just images that are uploaded to your website right now. And then we have some shapes right here. Now, when I go down here, you can see these are all the different pages to this story. So I can click through them just like this. And you can see these are designed very, very nice. Right here, I can delete a page, I can duplicate a page, and I can add a new page. So when you add a new page, it's literally just completely blank. You'd go here and probably drop in an image so this is an interesting image right there. I don't know how it's actually going to look, uh, but we could go like this and we can try to do something really cool with it like that. Uh, that actually looks kind of odd, uh, but then we can drop in some text. Like I said, the text is not going to be formatted. You'll have to choose your font over here, choose your font color, your alignment and all of that. And then we can do shapes. So I will add this shape like that and uh, I will make it rotated a little bit and let's go ahead and make this larger. Let's go like sideways like that. There we go. It's all free form. Uh, so let's make this uh, white. So I've changed the color and then right here I can change the opacity. So let's maybe make that 50 so it's kind of see through and then I'll drag my text in there. The only problem is the text is under the box, but don't worry, there's a layers option right here. So I can go ahead and rearrange them. So now you see I moved my layer of text up and it's on top of the box. And there we go. And we have a little bit of alignment. So when I'm pulling the text down, it's letting me know that it's in the middle of that box. And if I move it to the left, it's kind of centered right there as well. And there you have it. I have started making a page for this web story. So the workflow would go like this. You create a blog post, then you create a web story and you publish it. And then you take the link to the web story and you insert it into that blog post. And then the two will be linked up. Let me show you how to do that. So say I love my web story. I'm going to go here. I'll click on publish. It's going to save and then here's a link to view it. Now I can also add it to a brand new blog post. I probably wouldn't start my workflow in here and then the blog post. I would do the blog post and then create this. So I'm going to click right here where it says view story and you can see they actually look kind of nice in a normal web browser as well. So from here you'll want to copy the URL to your clipboard just like that. That's the link to this story. Ooh, 666. That's that's creepy. Then you're going to want to go back to WordPress. I'll click on dismiss and for posts, I will click on all posts if I just want to insert it. So say I wanted to insert it into this blog post right here. So I'll go ahead and click into it and then I will go to where I want to insert it. Uh, you would probably want to insert it here in the top. So what I would probably do is I would add a block. So I'm using cadence blocks. So it has this wonderful row layout. So I will add that and I'd probably do a two column like this and then I would move a, my kind of attention getting headline, not the headline, but just that sub headline to get someone to want to read on. And then off to the right, I'd probably insert the web story. So right here, I'm going to click on plus and I'll start typing web. But as I do that, you can see here is a block for a web story. I'll click right there and I'll paste it in and then I'll click on embed. It's so funny why it does that embed. Okay. I have to do it twice. You saw how I had to do it twice there. I don't know if that's a bug or what, but it is what it is. 
And then you have some styling options here where you can choose the width and the height and all that kind of stuff. You have to show the web story in the blog post for it to be linked to that blog post. Okay, so I've got this little bit of text. Let me see if I can drag and drop it in there. Oh, there we go. I was able to do that. And uh, there we go. So I'll go ahead and click on update and let's go ahead and view the post. And you can see, don't uh, take the, the design of this. I'm This is a test site. Uh, you can see I moved my text there and I have this giant web story. I'd probably continue with some of this text up there. And the web story is just moving. Now in theory, later this summer, 2020, Google's gonna be visiting my website. They're gonna see I have this blog post that has this web story and maybe if I'm lucky, cross my fingers, they're going to show that big, big amount of real estate in the search engine results. When someone's on a mobile device, they're going to show my web story where someone can click on it and they can be inside of it. I didn't show you. You could also add a link or a call to action and all that kind of stuff inside of that web story. Here are some of the problems with this. Uh, problem number one, it takes a lot of effort. So... Uh, you saw it has kind of a free form assembly of the different pages. It's just going to add a lot of extra work to building a single web story. The tool that Google gives us, and there isn't any real third party tools out there just yet. It's kind of a pain in the rear end. I, I could see it being tedious and getting tired of building these web stories. I think someone, if this does catch on the web story, story technology, some smart developer that might be watching this video is going to make it easier to create these. So there's better templates. Maybe the templates take in automatically the headlines in or the headings that you use inside of your blog post. So I can just take my blog post, paste a link in. It's going to pull in the images to use. It's going to pull in any quotes that I use. It's going to pull in any headings that I use in the order that I use them and give me access to easily slip in new images for the backgrounds of each of those. I think if someone builds that, this would be a lot more practical because as it is now, it's a whole heck of a lot of work. Now, I personally am not opposed to putting in work, but I am opposed to putting in work for something that maybe might turn some kind of a result. We don't know yet what Google's going to do with these stories, how long they're going to stick to these stories. Are they even committed to this? Or is this just some copycat feature idea that they're taking from other platforms? I'll personally say there's stories on Facebook, there's stories on YouTube. I'm not really into Instagram. I never look at those stories on Facebook on my mobile app, and I've never really looked at them either on YouTube, even though they're right there at the top in a very prominent position. So me personally, I'm not a story, a consumer of these stories. However, that's not to say that other people in society are also not consumers of stories. So right now I see a lot more cons than pros to the web stories. And some people are already saying you should put all this effort into creating web stories because maybe something might come of them. Maybe you'll get rankings. Maybe you'll get favor from Google. But for me personally, that's a whole lot of maybe. And there's only 24 hours in a day. It's not like you're going to have some immediate competitive advantage that you couldn't catch up if and that's a big if, if these actually catch on and really become a thing. Now, what everybody should be doing if you want search engine results traffic is keeping tabs on this, keeping tabs on this concept. So once it does release later this summer, the final version of the plugin, I actually don't even like the plugin, but more of these are going to be inserted in the mobile search engine results. So everybody should be paying attention to this and industry blogs uh, or industry YouTube channels like mine, uh, where I'll keep you informed on whether these are actually turning into results for people. And you know what? If they are turning in results for people, guaranteed by that time, better tools are going to come out to make these better and faster versus putting all this effort into a clunky WordPress plugin that has a kind of too much flexibility, if you ask me, uh, in the editor there. And all that work that you would put in really will not have a result. So this is more of a 
this is a nice to know information. Keep tabs on it. If it does turn into a thing, use a modern tool to make them fast and add them to your website. Now, I'm just me. I want to ask you, help me understand. Does this seem like something that you would click on if you were searching for something on your mobile device? And number two, do you click on these types of stories that are already on other mobile platforms such as Facebook, YouTube, of course, Instagram, I think people use them there, but are you a consumer of these stories? And number three, let's debate this. Do you think this is something that you should focus on and put effort into now? Or is this just something you put in the back of your mind, you keep tabs on and you see how it shakes out before you put all the time, effort and energy into building out web stories. And lastly, number four, the most important point is to smash that like button, hit the subscribe button and that notification bell. That helps me out here on this channel. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.